Hello my dear friends, this is another video, this time it's a little bit different. Um, just a side note, I don't know how others record their videos when there's this ideal sound, nothing in the background with my videos, there's always someone whistling, children screaming, some birds are screaming as well, but this is just how it is, you know, when you live in residential area, it's like that. I suppose it's to be expected. Anyway, this um, current video it's about Boardman bicycle brand and its unusual designs. You know, in uh, St. Petersburg in Russia there is a museum called Kunstkamera and it's about different abnormalities in people, <laughs> weird people, you know, three fingers and stuff like that. So this is probably very similar, but in terms of cycling design, weird cycling design, which I'm about to demonstrate to you. Um, this is um, related to drop out area of the bicycle and the royal hanger, uh, rare one obviously. Mm. This is not something you would normally take a look at when you're buying a bicycle or Pay a lot of consideration to it, but if there are problems there, it's a big, big problem. <laughs> so I'm going to demonstrate you some of my problems. And but just before I do that, just a little bit of a history. Uh, now I have noticed that at the rear of the bicycle there is uh, something unusual going on. There was a bit of a rattle. Every time I would put the bicycle down on the ground, a little bit of a rattle around this rear area of the bicycle. Now, it took me a little bit of time to figure out what it was. I also noticed another thing in the horizontal plane. The wheel was playing a little bit more than it should. Yes, I understand there's a play in the spokes and all the rest of it, but it was a little bit more. It wasn't feeling right. There was too much play and too much rattle in that area. Anyway, I took the rear wheel off and as um, long as I've done that, I saw that this dropout slash the royal hanger was just, you know, moving almost freely. There was lots of play in it. And um, now I'll probably move a bit closer to explain it to you. So. There was a, a little bit uh, zoom you. Yeah. So there was a little bit of a play in this area here. Now this is the royal hanger slash it's also a dropout. So the through axle is just coming outside of here. And uh, this was plain. Um, now this part is held on those two bolts. Now this is a bodge or a hack or a fix that I've done in order to try and to fix it. Um, the way it works is on the other side there there are just uh, bolt heads. They go through this and it's um, it's sandwiched together yes and there's a bit of a lip coming on top of this aluminium part which sort of holds it in place and prevents it from obviously going up but as you can see there's no carbon on this side so nothing apart from those two little bolts that are going through prevents it from rocking in this direction here in horizontal plane and um, these are just little M4 bolts, little tiny 4mm bolts that are going through and they're just held in a thread there of that uh, deroyle hanger slash uh, dropout aluminium thread. There's nothing to it, it's very weak. Um, and um, what has happened, I was trying to tighten that just to stop it from moving and I realized that the top bolt wasn't actually able to go any tighter. 
and that was because um, obviously on when it was assembled in the factory they have tightened it too much and it has stripped the thread of this aluminium deroyal henna slash dropout henna and um, with time slowly it was becoming worse and worse more and more wob wobbly obviously with a road cycling a couple of thousand kilometers uh, nothing special no big potholes or anything like that just regular smooth road cycling um, but this design in general you know this is a very weird very weird design so <laughs> basically this dropout nothing holds it in place apart from those little tiny bolts and I was trying to fix it obviously there's no thread but you can see how little aluminium is actually there so you're not able to make an M5 thread and just go with a bigger bigger bolt no because there's not enough material here on the side so what I had to do is I had to put a knot just take a longer bolt and put a knot through now uh, how it's done in normal bicycles <laughs> this is obviously a bicycle of a smoker and how you know there's this comparison of lungs of a smoker and a normal person uh, and uh, the normal bicycle I have it here it's my old Fuji so you can see how simple and elegant it is it's just uh, a little bit of carbon here and this is the dro dropout here and the through axle is actually going through but it's going through effectively through the frame so if anything happens to the deroiler hanger the only problem you will have is that rear deroiler will not work properly obviously it will you know not be able to you'll not be able to change the gears but in terms of the uh, stiffness of this rear triangle and the wheel and etc etc it will all be fine because this is just how it should be done you see there's this carbon bead here and the same on the other side and obviously in Boardman on the other side the same you know weird very weird design it's just a drop out and uh, the Royal Hanna 2-in-1 which isn't just isn't carbon this is all aluminium which is attached to the carbon by two tiny little tiny bolts so yeah and this is so easily fixed and I don't know why Boardman would go with such a weird ineffective dangerous counterproductive design I have no idea and uh, I had some experience with Boardman before now I'm sure that they'll just ignore my contacts if I'll try to claim any warranty on this or anything like that they're not just notorious for their um, poor quality but also in design faults and manufacturing defects but also their customer support is lacking as well so there's no chance I'll be able to achieve anything by contacts unless I'll want to go to court probably but that's that's another thing to think about maybe for the future but um, yeah so this is how it is a terrible terrible design now I understand that Boardman is one of the brands which is uh, like you know like a dead lion basically uh, it was never a lion like a dead dog everyone likes to kick it <laughs> because it's such such a poor design such a poor quality poor manufacturing <laughs> and the standards are just lacking but um, I just um, thought I'll let you all know and just show it to you just show you you know how ugly and ridiculous this design is you know it's just it's not going to work and nothing has passed through the engineers head when they designed it you know <laughs> yeah yeah it will work maybe maybe not I don't know what they were thinking about but anyway this is just this short video about this poor design another problem that I had with Boardman while we're on that subject is uh, this seat clamp here basically this is a new one the one that I had before looked very similar but uh, here there was this opening which was a bit bigger 
and basically the problem was with um, the seat clamp it had very sharp edges on the inside which scratched hell out of the frame and initially I thought it's even a crack it wasn't a crack it was just some deep scratching uh, it just wasn't machined properly it wasn't smoothened it was just very sharp like a knife like edge to it uh, the shop that I bought the boardman from who are no longer obviously working with boardman and that's understandable they've just replaced the seat clamp for me and that's it about boardman this is not a full-scale uh, review of the bicycle maybe I'll do one in the future but just some annoying very small and not very obvious fault which can come to and lead to very serious consequences and really really serious and big problems Thank you.